How Saudi Arabia Moves Seawater Deep Into the Desert You turn on a kitchen tap in the middle of Saudi Arabia and water pours out instantly, clear, cold, ordinary, which is strange because there are no rivers here, no lakes, almost no rain, and beneath the sand, very little usable groundwater left. By all logic, that tap should produce nothing but dust and disappointment. And yet millions of people do this every day without a second thought. So the question isn't whether Saudi Arabia has water. The question is how water that shouldn't exist here manages to show up on demand every single time. Because that glass of water didn't fall from the sky. It didn't flow down from a mountain. It didn't come from some hidden underground river. Chances are, it started its life as seawater. In the ocean. Hundreds of kilometers away. And then it went on a long, expensive, very carefully controlled journey through one of the largest engineered water systems ever built. Saudi Arabia is one of the driest inhabited places on Earth. Much of the country receives less rainfall in a year than some cities get in a single afternoon storm. Summer temperatures regularly climb past 45 degrees Celsius or about 113 Fahrenheit, hot enough to punish both people and machines. For most of human history, survival here depended on small populations, oases and wells that were carefully protected. Water was rare, seasonal and never taken for granted. Fast forward to today and the picture looks completely different. Massive cities, air-conditioned malls, industries that run around the clock, even agriculture in places that used to be empty desert. Something clearly changed, and it wasn't the climate suddenly becoming generous. Modern Saudi Arabia exists because water stopped being a natural resource and started becoming a manufactured one. Oil may be what made Saudi Arabia wealthy, but water is what keeps it alive day to day. In the early decades of modernization, groundwater was pumped aggressively to support growing cities and large-scale farming. For a while, it worked. Ancient aquifers filled thousands of years ago were tapped like savings accounts, but unlike money, those accounts don't refill on a human timeline. Eventually, the water levels dropped, wells dried up, and the math stopped working. That forced a hard realization. If the country wanted modern cities, industry, and a stable population, it couldn't rely on nature to supply water. It would have to make its own, at an industrial scale, every day, indefinitely. That's where desalination enters the story. Saudi Arabia sits next to two enormous bodies of water, the Red Sea and the Arabian Gulf. Endless seawater right there, completely useless for drinking, but plentiful. Desalination is the process of removing salt and impurities from seawater to make it safe for human use. The basic idea is simple. The execution is not. At a desalination plant, seawater is either heated until it evaporates, leaving salt behind, or forced through ultrafine membranes that block salt molecules while letting water pass. Different plants use different methods, 
but the goal is always the same. Turn ocean water into fresh water at massive volume, non-stop. Some of these plants are among the largest in the world, producing hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of water every single day. To put that into perspective, imagine running the world's biggest water filter. Now imagine it never turning off, and imagine doing that in extreme heat, with salt trying to corrode everything it touches. That's desalination. But here's the thing most people miss. Making the water is only half the problem. Sometimes not even the hardest half, because once you've made fresh water on the coast, you still have to move it. And water, inconveniently, is heavy. A single liter weighs one kilogram. A cubic meter weighs a metric ton. Now multiply that by billions of liters. Water doesn't glide politely across the landscape. It resists, it sloshes, it builds pressure, and it really doesn't like going uphill. Unfortunately, much of Saudi Arabia's population lives inland, at higher elevations, far from the sea. So the country made a decision that shapes everything you're seeing today. Instead of moving people to water, it would move water to people. That decision led to the construction of a vast pipeline network, stretching hundreds of kilometers across deserts that look completely empty from the outside. These pipelines are enormous. Some are wide enough for a person to stand inside. They're built from thick steel, designed to survive extreme temperature swings, shifting sand, and decades of constant pressure. In many places, they're buried beneath the ground to protect them from heat and damage. In others, they run above ground, supported by concrete structures that allow expansion and contraction as temperatures rise and fall. From the air, you might never notice them. On the ground, they quietly do the most important job in the country. Think of this system less like household plumbing and more like a circulatory system for an entire nation, a system that cannot stop. Moving water across this distance introduces another major problem, gravity. Water naturally wants to flow downhill. Saudi Arabia routinely forces it uphill, sometimes by hundreds of meters, sometimes by more than a thousand. To do this, the system relies on powerful pumping stations placed at intervals along the pipeline. Each station acts like a relay runner, taking water that's already under pressure and boosting it further along the route. These pumps are massive, energy-hungry machines designed to run continuously in brutal conditions. If one fails, backup systems kick in immediately because stopping the flow isn't an option. And here's a strange twist. In some cases, the energy required just to move the water inland can rival the energy used to desalinate it in the first place. Water here behaves less like a natural substance and more like an industrial product, something that has to be manufactured, transported, and managed every step of the way. Pressure becomes both your best friend and your worst enemy. Too little pressure and water won't reach its destination. Too much and pipes can rupture. A failure in the middle of the desert isn't just inconvenient. 
It can cut off supply to entire regions. That's why the system is monitored constantly. Sensors track pressure, flow rate, temperature, and structural stress. Control rooms oversee vast sections of the network in real time. Engineers can detect problems before they turn into disasters, adjusting flow or shutting down sections if necessary. The real achievement here isn't just scale, it's reliability. A system this large doesn't get applause for working once. It gets judged on working every day quietly without anyone noticing. About halfway through this journey, it's worth asking a question. Would you be comfortable knowing your city's entire water supply depends on a single engineered system running non-stop through the desert? No rivers as backup, no rainfall safety net, just steel, pumps, and planning. Drop a yes or no in the comments. As the water finally reaches cities, it becomes ordinary again. It fills storage tanks. It flows into homes, hospitals, factories, and mosques. It supports industry and in carefully controlled amounts, agriculture. Saudi Arabia once tried large-scale desert farming using groundwater, but today, water-intensive crops are tightly regulated or imported instead. Every drop delivered inland has a real cost, and everyone knows it. That's what makes this system so unusual compared to most of the world. Many countries rely on rivers, snowmelt, rainfall, and reservoirs. Gravity does much of the work. Water flows downhill, gets stored behind dams, and spreads naturally across landscapes. Saudi Arabia doesn't have that luxury. Its entire water supply chain is engineered from start to finish. From ocean intake to household tap, nothing is left to chance. Few countries attempt this approach at such scale because it's expensive, energy-intensive, and unforgiving. But for Saudi Arabia, it isn't a bold experiment. It's the only option. And that brings us back to that glass of water. What looks simple is anything but. That water traveled from the sea, through a desalination plant, into massive pipelines pushed uphill by powerful pumps, monitored by sensors, and delivered across hundreds of kilometers of desert. Also, someone can turn a handle and not think about it. That's the quiet miracle of everyday infrastructure. The systems that don't ask for attention, but collapse instantly if we forget how complex they really are. Before you head out, hit like and subscribe if you enjoy stories about the hidden systems that keep modern life running. And remember, stay curious about the things that seem simple. They're usually anything but. Thanks for watching The History of Everyday Things.